Hey, I'm Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And we're welcoming summer. I hope you all have some fun plans coming ahead. And I think you're really going to enjoy uh, this version. I'm going to give you a basic version. We're going to do something called burger dogs. And if you've never had them or never heard of them, uh, that's about to change. So stay tuned on this. So many different variations. And we're going to do a, a nice uh, flavorful New England style coleslaw. And I say New England style because it has just a hint of mayonnaise instead of a vinegar based. And I think you're going to recognize the flavors here. Very traditional, very easy. And then for dessert, something special with watermelon that's easy. And I think what I was trying to do here is a lot of these recipes you can prepare in advance because when you're having a cookout, a barbecue, a gathering, or you're at the beach, you don't want to be the one in the kitchen cooking and slaving all day. So these are very user friendly so you can have time with your guests and company. So let's get started on our coleslaw mix. And I have here some uh, shredded cabbage, carrots, and I always add a little bit of sweet onion into this. And you may notice here that it's chopped very finely. And this is very important. A lot of times you can do this on your own or even if you buy the bagged variety, make sure you chop it up by hand because the pieces are just too big to absorb the dressing the way you want it to. So very important. All these little details really matter. So I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to make our dressing here. And I'm going to start out with a uh, half a cup of mayonnaise because, as I said, it's a New England based recipe. So we'll put that in. And very easy to do ahead of time. And then we have here a quarter cup of milk. And we have here a quarter cup of buttermilk. And that's going to give a nice liquid texture. And the buttermilk just adds a nice little tweak to it, a nice tang. So we're going to do that. And then it looks like a lot, but a third cup of sugar, fine sugar. And uh, two tablespoons of white wine distilled vinegar. And I'm going to add some fresh lemon juice to this too. And leave your, when you're going to use a lemon and you're going to juice it, Leave it out at room temperature for a while and it makes a, a softer, juicier lemon. Or you can put it in the microwave if you'd like as well. So we want about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. These are great to save if you want to put these in the freezer when you use them instead of tossing them. Put, fill this with a scoop of sherbet and put it in the freezer and you have a nice little treat after for your guests. It looks very fancy. And then two tablespoons is one, two of lemon juice. You want to measure carefully. I was going to work at the nuclear power plant measuring out uranium, but I do this instead. So we have that. And then our seasonings are going to be a little salt. And I like the Himalayan coarse salt. A little bit of black ground pepper to taste. You know, you can always add broccoli and do a broccoli slaw, but I kind of like to keep it traditional, have familiar flavors. And a little bit of celery salt. I love celery salt. It's not used that much these days, but it just adds a nice flavor. Now we're going to take our coleslaw mix and just blend this really well and pour it all over. And this is really good if it sets. Even overnight you can do this ahead of time because it keeps the crunchy texture in it. And that's all there is to it. So we're going to set that aside. 
and we're going to have our slaw all ready to go. We're going to get out our burger jars. Wait until you see this. This is so cool. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We have our coleslaw chilling in the refrigerator. And don't forget to do that ahead of time. It's really a lot better if you let it set for at least half an hour. And you can certainly do the dressing ahead of time as well the night before. Assemble it in the morning and you're good to go by afternoon. So it's really good. And that is a great topping on top of the salads too. Uh, I'm sorry, on top of burgers. Um, it, it makes a great topping. So we're doing our burger dogs. And this is what they look like. And I'm going to show you how to make these. And there's a surprise in the middle. And I've used about a pound of ground beef. And I separated them. About a pound of ground beef will do about five of these. And I season the meat with salt and pepper. And I love onion powder and garlic powder. And you put them in between plastic. And it's just a matter of forming these into a long rectangle. And you can certainly get the children to help you with this in the kitchen. And you can do these the night before. They're much better and easier to work with when you cook them if you do these ahead of time. And then uh, chill them in the refrigerator overnight. So another thing that you could do ahead of time. And you know me, whenever I can do that, I take advantage of that. And so for these burger dogs, and there's many different types that you can do. Let's say, for example, oh, right here is some cheddar cheese that I've cut into sticks. But for variation, you can do a taco seasoning inside the ground beef. And what do you think you'd put in the center for the cheese? A long cube of Monterey Jack cheese. And then you, for your toppings, you do all kinds of Mexican toppings. You could do salsa, avocado, onions, guacamole, um, and you can even serve them in a taco shell if you'd like. And it makes a great addition to your barbecue. Let's say you want to do something with chicken. You can do a chicken parmesan one and put Italian seasoning inside um, the meat mixture, and then do a tube of the mozzarella stick inside and top it with marinara sauce. It'd be outstanding. So look at our burger. You just roll it out like that. Let's do one more. Um, you could also do a um, pizza dog with either chicken or hamburger and do some Italian seasoning in the hamburger mixture. Put Again, mozzarella in the middle, and then a pizza sauce on the top, and some little pepperonis or onions, caramelized onions. Uh, Philly cheesesteak you can do with peppers and onions on the top, and any kind of cheese in the middle. So you know where I'm going. There's no limit to all the different types. You could do an Asian burger, a Mediterranean burger, and I'm just kind of folding it over like so. And the only thing you really have to be sure of is that you enclose all the meat over the cheese so that it doesn't leak out. And I'm going to put on my skillet here. And we're just going to put these, we're doing this indoors, but of course you can put it on your grill, your preheated grill, and cook them just until they cook through. And whatever your favorite meat mixture is, you can do a, um, this is like a 90% lean, which I like. But you can do any kind that you'd like. So those are our burger dogs. I'm going to heat the skillet and put those in. And they don't take very long. You want to keep an eye on them. And then look at what our toppings are. Look at this. Just think about whatever you would like to have on top of your burger. And this is just the beginning. Uh, we have some ketchup, mustard of your choice, some pickles. I have two different types, some cornichon and some hamburger pickles. Chopped, fresh cherry tomatoes. Look at how beautiful those are. And some sweet onions. So you put these out with the burgers, and we have some rolls and you can do whatever toppings. Since there's cheese in the middle, you don't need to add cheese on top because you have that encased 
inside of your burger dogs. So do all these ahead, depending on how many you're feeding in the crowd, and your guests are going to love these. So I'm going to put these into our skillet. I have a little bit of oil and butter mixture. You always want to add a little bit of uh, vegetable oil if you're using a little bit of butter, and there's not that much, just enough for the bottom of the pan. So I think it gives it a nice flavor. And then we're going to put those in and cook them pretty much like you would cook a hot dog. And they're starting to sizzle because the pan is hot. And we're going to brown those, and those are not going to take very long at all. And I would do these at the last minute and serve them hot right off the grill and then have everybody help themselves. It's a great conversation piece. And do a bunch of different flavors and, and make sure you label them so people know what kind, you know, what's, what's involved and how to group the toppings with the burgers so they'll know. And you, you're going to be the talk of the tree. It's a great summer thing. So I'm going to finish cooking these. Takes about uh, three, four minutes each side because the cheese is in the center, so it's a very thin coating of the ground beef, so you don't need to cook them that long. So we're going to get these done on a platter, and we'll be right back with dessert. Hey, welcome back. I've just plated up our burger dogs. Look at these. Are they gorgeous? in about three minutes per side, and we're gonna load them up with some fixings so you can get a good idea what they're gonna look like. Let's do some onions, load them up. And I was saying too that the um, baked beans would be great on top. You could do a little side dish of baked beans. And everybody can help themselves. Jalapeno peppers would be awesome. Let's do a mix of cornichon. And burger peppers, um, pickles rather, these are very garlicky, very good. And then some ketchup. Oh, this is a whole meal. And then because we can, this is so fun, some potato sticks right on the top. These add a nice little crunch. We're going to transfer this onto a dish and put, look at our coleslaw, how beautiful this is. Put some right alongside. <clears throat> and that is a feast. Look at that. We're going to set that right here. And that is beautiful. So do those ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, Do those ahead, and you're good to go. So those make, one pound makes approximately five different burgers. So we're going to move that into the front, front and center. And now we're going to do our dessert. And let's clear our platter. Those are good. And now, look at what we're doing for dessert. This is fun. These this is a watermelon that I've peeled and sliced. And what you want to do is cut off the bottom so it lies flat. And then you peel it very carefully, very slowly on a cutting board. Put a paper towel, a wet paper towel underneath your cutting board so it doesn't move around. And just carefully get a good knife, slice through it as you go. And um, that's all there is to it. I, and then I took some little picks and you can see they all come out in their own little serving. So it's an easy way to go. So I'm going to set that. And I'm going to go over here. And we're going to make a dressing to go with it. And this is an easy dressing to do. I'm going to move this over here just for a minute. So you can get a good view of what we're doing. And over here, I have some yogurt and a bowl. And you can use any flavor, but this is a great combination of key lime, key lime yogurt, light. And then we have a, a vanilla one. 
And I tried it plain. It's just too intense with the key lime. I think it's nice to kind of dilute it a little bit, the key lime, about half and half with vanilla yogurt and then the key lime. And just eyeball it. And then to bump this up a little bit, when do you see this? I'm going to take from my herb garden. Look at this, what we have, a bounty of everything. I have some berries and cream mint. Isn't that amazing that we're going to put that? And then this is a pineapple mint. This is a chocolate mint over here. Oh, the, the fragrances are just incredible. This is Mexican tarragon, which tastes like licorice, which is so fun. I mean, everybody's going to say, how did you make this? And this is lemon basil. Now, you don't have to put all of these, but did you know basil is a member of the mint family? So it pairs very well. And even if you just had regular dried mint or fresh basil, you could do just about anything. And I'm going to add this, and this is what makes this a real showstopper for a dessert to go with our watermelon skewers because I'm going to add this right into the yogurt. And it makes it so fresh and so wonderful. So I'm going to just chop it up and then add it to the yogurt. And toss that around. I think I'm going to put a little bit of this tarragon. I love this. And you would never think to add this to a dessert, but it's so fragrant. And I think I mentioned about herbs being basically a weed. So if you're not a gardener, start out with making an herb garden for yourself. It's so nice to do. And then you want to have a little bowl that looks like a watermelon. We're going to pour that in there. And this is so yummy. And we have our little watermelon dishes that you have to have. And the way you serve it, let's take a nice skewer. Let's pick one on the end over here. And you could eat it just like that. But look at this. And of course, this is low fat. This is a great, healthy, refreshing dessert to do. Or you can do them on little, little other dishes like that. But how nice is that to present for dessert? So you just set that all out together. So we have our watermelon with our yogurt lime dressing. We have our beautiful coleslaw that we've done, and this is so yummy. Put this on your burger too, that's good. All of our toppings, and it's up to you. You could do something different every time you serve this, all the different variations, and we'll be doing some more as the summer goes on. And then our burger dog with all the toppings. This is so good, and you know what? I wanna cut into this so you can see inside is the cheese filling. How fun is that? It's like a little surprise treasure inside. So I hope you try these recipes. And when we come back, we're going to finish up with a great tool time for the summer. So you don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. So in order to make all these wonderful recipes that we did, or any recipes all year long, I can't stress enough how important it is to have the right tools to build a recipe. So I'm going to go over some of the ones I used. You saw me juicing a lemon with this tool. And it's, it's just a great tool. It has a ridge here. It has holes here to, so the seeds don't go through. And it even has measurements inside and a little grip on the bottom. So as you're juicing, it doesn't spin around. A nice spout to pour. It just makes it easier. A nice, nice tool to have. And so um, you can juice it with a uh, reamer. They call a reamer a wooden one or a plastic one. 
But I like this because you don't have to deal with the seeds and it gets every little bit of the um, juice out of your lemon or lime or orange. And always remember to have your uh, citrus at room temperature and you'll juice them much, much easier. And if you don't have time, pop them in the microwave for 30 seconds and that'll work too. A good summer tool or all year round, a nice silicone basting brush. These are great. This, they have all different sizes. I like this as a good medium size, especially if you're grilling outside. This has a little edge to it, so it hangs on to the side of, of a, a bowl if you're using that for basting. And it's just a great tool to have in your kitchen. Dishwasher safe. If you remember the old style, the boar's hair bristles, that eventually would all come out, and that's not a good thing. But these here... Um, as long as you don't put them over a hot, really, really hot, over 500 degrees, they'll last you forever. And they clean really well in the dishwasher. It's important to have a good um, cleaning process when you're using tools like this, especially on the barbecue grill. <coughs> so those are great. This is, I love these for serving. We have tongs over here as well for our coleslaw. Uh, these are nice for serving or turning hot dogs. Um, this is nice because it has a spatula feature. I wouldn't use these on a grill. They're more for serving, but you can see how convenient they are. And they store really well when you close them like this in a draw. Just great, makes things easy too for your guests to serve. Um, if you want them on a buffet, they can serve themselves. And it's nice for them to have the tools as well. Now, if you have a grill and you want to use a grilling tong, these are grilling tongs. They withstand the heat. And of course, you want a longer handle for obvious reasons. You don't want to be right over a grill. And they do lock like that. And you push the lock forward and they open. So they've really thought of everything. So you can store them in a drawer like so. Great for your burgers, your hot dogs, the turning chicken and steak. Um, getting those shish kebabs off the grill can be a challenge. And this is what you want a nice, I like the silicone over here because you tend to get a better grip on the food. You don't want it sliding or losing it when you get it halfway to the platter, if you know what I mean. So I have those along with a nice grilling spatula as well. But that is a great, serious grilling tool. Something else you always see me use, these are our stainless steel whisks. Uh, you can whip cream, mix uh, dressings. Um, you can even do mojitos with these like this. And this one here I love. Make sure because it's sealed in the middle so the food doesn't go down there where you can't clean them. And it all stainless steel, very, very important. And you can just see how efficient and effective this is because of the many, many layers inside. So it's going to be very efficient when you're whipping cream, whipping volumes of air into the cream, or you want to mix uh, uh, like we did with our dressing so that it doesn't curdle and you get a nice smooth finish. And here's a test of a whisk, a good whisk is going to vibrate so this here you can see the multi layers that means it's very flexible very user friendly and very safe because stainless steel whenever you can get stainless steel it'll last you forever forever and ever great tool to have and this isn't a tool but it's something you want to have in your pantry during barbecue season you can of course buy your favorite seasonings but sometimes you can't always find them and I like to mix my own from what I have on hand, and they're the same basic ingredients that I would season in my pantry. You can see the red color here is paprika, or smoked paprika. It gives it a nice barbecue flavor. Of course, some coarse salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. And that would be your basic for anything you can use. You can use them um, on chicken, great on seafood, um, you can marinate with this, put it in your vegetables. It's, it has a lot of flavor when you're barbecuing and grilling vegetables. Whenever you can add flavor, go for it. And this is the way to go. You could even add a label on here so you know um, if you're mixing them. Make sure you keep track because you know what? You want to make sure you make it again if you like it. 
and feel free to add your own seasoning and personalizing to your family's uh, tastes as well. Sometimes I add a little bit of chili lime in a bowl. I just pour it in a bowl if I want to do a Mexican chicken and add that to the little bowl. But I always start out with this. Great to have on hand. And look at how much you can make with what you have in your pantry. So I suggest you make notes on how you make it, experiment with it, and uh, try it out. Let me know how it goes. Thank you to everybody. I, I read all your emails and suggestions. And you have some good questions too. So I hope you try all of these recipes for the summer and I hope you're having a great summer. We've had a challenging winter and we're moving on and we're, we're, we're gonna get through this. So thank you all for watching and may the fork be with you.